Well, most of the times we'll be asked to evaluate the definite integral of a function that is a curve instead of straight lines or instead of something that makes a geometrical figure. There will sometimes be situations where we recognize our integrand as something that is going to make a geometrical figure with the x-axis. And so we can go ahead and evaluate our definite integral using our geometry formulas instead of actually using either the limiting definition for the definite integral or the fundamental theorem of calculus for it. Especially if they just give us a graph of a function and they don't give us the function rule, then definitely we would need to utilize our ge uh, geometric formulas if we see they could be beneficial. So let's look at this particular question where it's asking me to find the definite integral from negative 4 to 5 of f of x dx where this graph is the graph of my function. So notice it has line segments. It's a piecewise defined function just over the domain from negative 4 to 5. And as I look at it, I realize that when I'm looking at that definite integral definition, just to kind of think about visually, it would be looking at the output function values at each x as you go along the interval and from left to right, and you're adding up all of those function values, and function values are from the x-axis to the function. That's what it's going to add up. So in this particular example, there are some of my function values whose outputs are negative and some of my function values whose output are positive. So when I use my geometry formula for this portion that's below the x-axis, I'm going to have to have negative that value from the geometry formula. And for the part that's above the x-axis, it will just be the value from geometry. So let's look and see what we have. Now we could think of this in a couple different ways. So it could be trapezoid and trapezoid, or it could be rectangle, triangle, triangle, rectangle. Now I'm just going to do it as the rectangle, triangle, triangle, rectangle, just so you can see a couple different things that we would think about with it. So I've got this part that's a rectangle, and then this part that's a triangle. And then from here, we've got another triangle, and then here. So for this first part, I have my length of 4, looking from left to right, my length of 4, and then my outputs were negative 2. So this part is going to be negative 8. And then for this triangle, I have my base of length of 2 and my height of negative 2, so 1 half the base times the height. I'm going to get my value for that triangle to be negative 2. And then for the next triangle, these are above the x-axis. My base is 2 and my height is 1. So I have one half the base times the height. So that's one. And then my rectangle at the end, it has a base of one and a height of one. So my one times one is one. And then as you think about properties even of our definite integral, our overall definite integral from negative 4 to 5 of f of x dx is the definite integral from negative 4 to 0 of my f of x dx plus my definite integral from 0 to 2 of my f of x dx, and then plus the definite integral from 2 to 4 of f of x dx, and then finally my definite integral from 4 to 5, this last piece of f of x dx. 
And then we found that this first one is negative eight. This next one is negative two. And then I got a value of one and another value of one. So I just looked at what I did for my geometry formulas, realizing that when it's below the x-axis, my outputs are negative, and when it's above the x-axis, my outputs are positive. So then I get for this uh, definite integral value from negative four to five of f of x dx for that picture is equal to negative eight. So notice, because over the interval, my, some of my function values were negative and some of my function values were positive, it's adding up all those function values. So you have negative numbers added in with positive numbers. So you can get a definite integral that is a negative number. Um, you can get a definite integral value that is zero. You can get definite integral values that are positive numbers. So this is my definite integral value. However, it's not the area caught between my function and the x-axis over that interval from negative four to five because over part of the interval, my function was below the x-axis. So when it added up negative numbers with positive numbers, I don't get the value for the area. But I do get was the value for the definite integral. So when does the definite integral value coincide with exactly the area? The definite integral will only be the area when your function is non-negative over the interval, where there's no place that the function goes below the x-axis over that interval. If you want the area and you have that your function goes below the x-axis over the interval, You've got to adjust for that, and we'll look at that as a different topic in a later video. But for now, just giving you an example of how you can actually utilize your geometry formulas for certain types of definite integral um, questions when you're presented with a graph that you can utilize your geometry formulas in. Thank you for watching my video, and I hope you have found it helpful.